We live in a time of great technological advances. We live in a time where we believe almost blindly, almost religiously, in the powers of science and scientists, and experts, doctors, and yet we are suddenly finding ourselves without a solution, without a clue. We don't know what we're dealing with. We don't know how to respond. We don't know how to control it. We don't even know what it is. And it's very good for the soul to be reminded that uh, we have not mastered the universe. We have not conquered nature. We still have a long way to go for that. Now, there are people who actually say, and they say, why would God allow such a virus? Why would God allow such a pandemic? Why would he allow it? What is that suggesting? It's as if some things happen and God intervenes, but then there are other things that happen and God doesn't intervene. Nothing happens unless God makes it happen. Everything that happens, happens for a divine purpose and a divine reason. Otherwise, it cannot happen. Everything we're going to experience is going to be divinely orchestrated for our benefit. The world is shutting down all its practices. What is our schedule made of? We go here, we go there. We do a little of this and we do a little of that. And then we come home and uh, we've had it. All of a sudden, without anyone saying a word, no theater, no partying, no traveling, no going anywhere. All our habits have now been canceled. We have been freed and liberated from our Mitzrayim. We are so caught up in these things that we actually started to believe that that's what life is about. Life is about going to school, going to work, going to parties, going to a theater, going for some entertainment, going for some shopping. That's life. Now we're seeing it's not. This is a very good thing. The break of habits that this virus is bringing is such a fantastic opportunity to change the habits we've been trying or hoping to change, planning to change for years. But, you know, an hour goes by, a week goes by, a month goes by, and you haven't changed it. Now we have the perfect opportunity. Everything is changing anyway. We can now have the life we choose. We are encouraged by events to rethink where we put our energies, what are we living for? What are we getting up in the morning for? The world is going to be a much better place as soon as this thing is over. That is really a pre-Pesach message. Every generation has to come out of its Mitzrayim, out of its enslavement. And what we're seeing now is, like in the days of Egypt, Jews were pushed out of Mitzrayim. Here we're being pushed out of our habits. We're not asked, we didn't volunteer, it's being done for us. If we take advantage, if we keep our heads and we see the opportunities, by Pesach time, we can have a much healthier life, a much healthier planet. All assumptions can now be questioned. All habits can now be challenged. All fears can now be dismissed. Were we worried about China? Were we worried about Iran? Were we worried about the price of oil? Boy, we're getting sobered up. Everything is changing. And it is changing for the better. It's a good thing. Not scary at all. Exciting. And we are maturing as a human race. That is a beautiful thing. It's not a warning. It's not a punishment. It's not, it's not doomsday, this is going to pass. And we're gonna find ourselves in a cleaner, healthier, more noble world, politically, geographically, financially, and personally. So now is the time to think not of ourselves, but of others, 
We have to become more alive, more enthusiastic about our mission and our purpose. We're going to do mitzvahs we've never done before because we're going to have more time. We're going to be home. We're going to become better mothers, better fathers, better husbands and better wives because we have no choice. Got no place to go. Ha, <laughs> ha.